Well, my next guest, Dr. Ron Paul, is a champion of freedom and the author of several books, including The Revolution, A Manifesto, and A Foreign Policy of Freedom. Well, let's begin with a discussion, Dr. Paul, on a topic that has many in the gold crown concerned. That's uh, Section 90. 06 of the new health care reform bill. This states that businesses must submit a Form 1099 for all purchases of goods and services of more than $600 a year made from any source. And the legislation goes into effect in January 2012. I know that you've been watching this, and you know, many folks are concerned, Dr. Paul, that this could lead to tracking of gold purchases. Well, I'm, I'm sure it can, and they've already tracked the bigger purchases, you know, anything $10,000, they've already done that. They are involved. But, you know, it's the way they've done this, which is such an outrage to think this is the way they're going to pay for medical bills. I, I've always argued that the, the medical bill and that plan wasn't good for our health, and it isn't good for our health. It isn't good for our economic health, or our, it isn't good for our freedoms or anything else. But this, a lot of members of Congress has already, uh, you know, become aware of this, and we have a bill in that many of us, well over 100 now, co-sponsor trying to get rid of this. But it's a shame that, you know, this stuff has to get passed, and then you have to offer amendments to strike this and strike that. But at least uh, the people are watching and listening, and it won't go into effect for a little bit. So let's hope that Congress can get their act together, and maybe after November we can put enough pressure on them to repeal that. But it is an outrage, and whether it's tracking gold or tracking guns, there are some there that always want to know exactly what we're doing. You know, I'd like to move on to the uh, supposed gold shortage at the U.S. Mint. Uh, you've been uh, talking about this for a while. You know, the Mint announced it was suspending sales of one-ounce gold bullion coins due to heavy demand until December. And, you know, the fractional half and quarter and tenth-ounce gold eagle coins have not been available for the better part of this year. Yeah, and when the Mint director was before our committee not too long ago, I was after him. I said, how could anybody conceive of this coming up if it were a private business? I mean, a shortage, they didn't have the blanks, they couldn't stamp them, and it's really complicated to make, a, a, you know, a gold blank. I mean, we know how to make jewelry. You'd think we could do a gold blank. Um, oh, no, but we have to buy those overseas. I mean, it's, it's so so ridiculous. You wonder exactly what's going on because they're making it harder and harder for people to actually get the gold and the silver in in the real sense and, and hold it. So I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen on that, but it's obviously either a reflection of, of a plan that they have to make it more difficult for us, or they are just totally inept like most bureaucrats are. And, you know, regarding those blanks, Dr. Paul, there was legislation back in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken, 1985, that stated that uh, all the gold must be mined in the U.S., then they ship it offshores. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. That sort of pushes the cost of those coins up. It makes us less competitive. It does, and it, it's, it all seems to tie right in with your idea of there might be something else going on behind the scenes there. Let's talk about uh, the bill you introduced, uh, the SEC Transparency Act of 2010, that's H.R. 5970. This legislation seeks greater transparency in the securities industry. It's designed to repeal the amendments uh, made by the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act relating to confidentiality. Care to uh, tell folks more? Well, you know, not, nobody uh, talked about this before it went in. I mean, a lot of us talked about a lot of the bad things and how horrible the whole bill was. But the fact that this uh, extra power given to the SEC uh, was slipped through there, I actually believe that Barney Frank probably didn't know that because he acted a little bit uh, honestly surprised about it. But what it does is says the SEC is not, uh, does not have to respond to freedom of information uh, requests. And once again, it's bigger government, more secrecy government, less privacy for, uh, for the individual. I, you know, worked hard on trying to get more transparency of the Fed. We got a lot of attention, and we got a little bit. But the truth is, is the Fed came out of that bill with more power than ever before, which is rather characteristic of how these things work. So the SEC gets stronger, more secrecy. The Fed gets more power. And, of course, the consumers will be protected because government bureaucrats know how to protect the consumer by destroying the marketplace, <laughs> you know. So... It's, it's a real mess, and it's these kind of things going on here. The tax issue, uh, along with all the regulations, is the reason people are uncertain about the future. I met with a group of business people in my district just yesterday, and the one word they kept saying is the uncertainty of what we're going to get in the way of taxes and, and regulations. This was, these were people from the chemical in, industry, 
and they have no idea what the regulations are going to be like in there. In, in the process of trying to revamp them all, all the regulations uh, under a Waxman bill, and uh, all these things that we're talking about, uh, are, you know, contribute to the um, inability of our economy, uh, you know, reviving. Uh, so government is doing exactly the wrong things as far as I'm concerned. They're making things worse. It seems as though they have really changed the rules here at halftime and, you know, have all the players scratching their collective heads. Just what can we expect? What's the ref going to throw at us next? You also defended uh, recently your gold stocks position, gold equities, and rebutted Jim Cramer's call to sell gold stocks. Could you tell us more? Well, I can't remember exactly the conversation there. I imagine at the time I was probably not overly anxious to talk about gold stocks, and uh, but, but I think he did get me sort of in a corner where I had to, uh, you know, defend what I what I do because it's public record. You can go to the public record and know exactly what I'm doing. But uh, I mean, some people would buy, you know, gold gold coins and use them. That's good insurance. Others would, you know, uh, deal in gold stocks, but. Uh, what was Kramer's position that he would buy stocks but not coins? Is that what he was saying? The GLD, I think it was. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. It was GLD. Which, you know, I don't get as excited about that. You know, people want to be there for a short while, but ultimately, uh, you know, I believe in the protection where people hold their money, their real money. So that's if you have a true gold standard, you have a gold coin standard so that the people can vote by holding their coins. So in a way, we have access to that because we're allowed to buy gold coins and hold them. So GLD, if somebody does that for a short period of time, that's their business. If you have gold stocks, I think there are times when people have to be nimble there. And it, it, gold stocks are just definitely different because it, it's more of an investment. Buying gold coins, I think, is more of an insurance because if you're buying stocks, you have to know the companies. Not every gold stock company is going to going to make money, so that's a little bit different type of investment, and there's more leverage there and, and, and more risk, too. Do you worry, though, Dr. Paul, that gold companies could become targeted by big government legislation and taxes and things of that nature in the coming year? They're susceptible to the taxation right now and the regulations, whether they can single out only gold gold stock companies. They shouldn't be able to do that. They might try to do that by manipulating language. I probably worry a little bit more about how they might regulate us on buying and, and selling our coins, and I think you uh, alluded to that about the 1099s, filling it out no matter what you do. The government knows exactly you know who's buying coins and, and what's happening. You know, when, when, when they over-regulate, What do they end up doing? They drive people into the underground economy. And that, of course, is risky business. You're in business. You've got to obey the law and how you do that. But when when the governments break the law, which is the Constitution, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on people who want to survive and take care of their families. That's why I consider it so dangerous. Also, the reason why I'm in politics, because I don't like some of those options. I'd like to uh, try to I contribute something to straightening this mess out so that we don't have the government bearing down on everything that we do. You know, many folks have made comparisons with the 1980s peak on the ultimate price for gold, perhaps in this run. When adjusted for inflation, that's over $2,500 per ounce. Does that sound like a reasonable target? It sounds like a start. I don't usually think about 1979, 1980 when it went to 980 because markets are never real smooth. Sometimes things are too low and sometimes things seem to be too high. And I can remember back in the 70s, I actually thought, you know, when it went from 35 up to uh, 500, I thought this thing was gone crazy. (laughs) I'm not buying anymore now, you know, because it just didn't make any sense. So it overshoots. And then uh, probably the gold bear market at 20 years, they that was probably way overdone, and you have the government interference. The price of gold probably really wanted to go up all through the 60s and the 70s, but it was held in check by the government fixing the price of gold artificially at $35 an ounce by dumping hundreds of millions of ounces of gold onto the market. So that was artificially low. Then it bounces up too high. And now, of course, it's gone through a period of time where they're probably in a more sophisticated manner uh, doing the same thing. If I were trying to compare it to the 70s, I probably wouldn't pick 800. I'd probably pick three or four hundred dollars. It finally settled out where it was once again too low at 260 dollars. If even if you calculated it through inflation, I I just don't think those those calculations mean all that much because. Uh, there are too many other factors involved. I mean, uh, there's the monetary factor, 
Uh, there's the political factor. There's just a lot of emotion packed into there. But I just try to listen, pay attention to the long-term economic laws, which means that if you print a lot of paper money, the ratio of that paper money to gold uh, will show that the paper money always depreciates. And I don't try to uh, say that it should be, uh, you know, if it was uh, 800 back in 1979, now it should be 2,500. Uh, I might say, from what I know about Washington, the way they are running up debt of $1.6 trillion a year and printing and sending us back to Washington as an emergency to send out $26 billion to keep some teachers employed, I, I would say that 25 you know, long term, I think 2,500 is very low. I mean, just think of the percentage increase from 35 to uh, 800, uh, more than a tenfold increase. If we start, if uh, if we were talking about that, now just doubling gold. I, I just look at the long term. We're printing money. We're spending money. We have not reformed Washington. They're destined to destroy the dollar, which means not that the gold price is going up, but the value of gold will be maintained. The value of the dollar is destined to go down. We are devaluing, depre- uh, devaluing uh, our dollar. That's what we're doing. Exactly, and all the world's uh, currencies now are, seem to be doing so at a, at a record clip as well. Dr. Paul, you've also introduced legislation to prohibit the taxation on coins and bullion. The goal of the Free Competition and Currency Act, H.R. 4248, is to dissolve the legal tender laws and prohibit taxation on certain coins and bullion. You know, if dollars aren't taxed, why should our gold and silver coins be taxed? <laughs> because they don't want gold to be money, and that's why they want it to be a mere commodity like jewelry, and so therefore they can tax it. But they can't repeal 6,000 years of history as gold being money. So this is the whole point. We know that gold is money. We want it to compete. I personally despise the Fed, but I don't have a bill in that would close the Fed down tomorrow. So what we need in this country is competition and free up the market, exactly opposite of what they're doing when you see that they're making coin companies send in 1099s for any purchase of $600 or more. So this is the, the wrong way. That's why I think if we only were allowed to compete, we'd win this fight hands down. And lastly, according to ronpaul.org, you may have plans to run for president in 2012. Yeah, I guess the, the word may, I guess that can exist. I've not made any decisions. Some people seem to want to jump the gun, but I haven't. I'm going to uh, obviously continue to think about it because people continue to ask me about it. But I think it's uh, a little bit early for that, and, and uh, yeah, I have to assess things a little bit later on and find out if the support is really there or not, see what the conditions are like. But so far, no decisions have been made. Well, Dr. Paul, your books, The Revolution, A Manifesto, and A Foreign Policy of Freedom can be found at ronpaul.org. Are there any other online resources you'd like to share with our listeners? They can get anything uh, really from Amazon. They're all on there. There's there's several there. So through Amazon or through the Campaign for Liberty, they ought to be able to find what they need. All right, sir. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me on the broadcast today and wish you a very safe and profitable week ahead. Thanks a lot. 